Hello, everyone. This is Gary Wilson. Welcome to this week's live Path to Prosperity webinar. Uh, welcome to all of you who are relatively new. A lot of folks should be in from uh, Vermont, New Hampshire uh, so far, and uh, soon to be Rhode Island, and then, of course, Massachusetts. So in any case, I'd uh, also welcome to, to a lot of the, the folks up in Ontario, where I'll be coming back next Sunday. I'll be there uh, for pretty much two weeks straight, just um, getting a little R&R. &R. And I'll be in Toronto. Um, the week after uh, Canada Day, week after Canada Day on July 4th, I'll be back in Toronto uh, for my own training. So in any case, um, uh, always make sure you guys, you get the recording the next day of this, because in the email, it's got a lot of housekeeping uh, announcements from Beverly, schedule changes, updates to the system, things like that. You've probably all noticed that the scheduling, how you schedule calls with me is changing, the link is changing. Uh, we're in a transition period this week. Uh, Sunday night or early Monday morning, I'll switch over to the to the new surviving link. Okay, so I know there were some two people were confused. They used the new link that's supposed to be for scheduling after Sunday, which is June 30th, and scheduled times this week. <laughs> so it caused some confusion, and I apologize about trying to be as clear as I could. But in any case, it was just the way we had to do it with the system. So stuff like that goes on. We want you to be abreast of that. Uh, for those of you who are new, you'll notice you're uh, by default in mute mode. You can use the chat box. Uh, to type in questions. I'll get to them as I go through the presentation. And of course, each day this gets recorded. We do this and you get the recording the next day. So in any case, welcome aboard to all of you. Appreciate you taking your time to do this. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. I'm going to jump into LinkedIn first. I'm going to show you an example of a LinkedIn account that I really like. It's uh, from a colleague of mine, uh, Peter Lazaroff. And a uh, cool thing about Peter's uh, actually, hang on, hang on one second, guys. Let me go back to the um, you do screen share. Hang on one second. That way you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So we're going to share Peter's screen. Now, you should all be able to see this, uh, Peter Lazaroff's LinkedIn screen. So if you can't see that, obviously let me know. But um, you should be all be able to see this, okay? Um, the reason I use his is I, I know him. I actually interviewed him the other week for a podcast. It'll be coming out probably, I think, in August, for example. I don't know the exact date, but look for it. Really neat guy. Um, he's not a real estate guy, but he appreciates real estate. He's rather is in the stock market and uh, does some other neat things. So we really like him. Um, I, I've met him through some mutual friends out in California. And um, a lot of, I know a lot of people that use him. So matter of fact, if you're looking to, you know, a lot of, we should never have all of our eggs in one basket. Of course, I'm, I'm big on real estate. Obviously, but uh, um, you know, over the years, I've I've made a good amount of money in the stock market too. And um, you know, Peter's Peter's one of the guys I I know and trust. So, in any case, the, the purpose of me showing you this is um, not to talk about Peter per per se, but you can certainly connect with him if you want. But to look at his LinkedIn page because we talked about it, um, he gets activity through this, which is can be quite difficult. Um, I will tell you, I just I'm just going to tell you right off the bat here. A lot of people struggle with LinkedIn guys, but here's why I like it for you, okay? Because you're a professional. Most of you are, are real estate agents. Um, some of you are investors, some of you are both, okay? And the fact is the folks that we like to work with are professionals in their fields too. And a lot of the professionals are on LinkedIn. This is where we connect with them. So my suggestion is if you don't already have one, set up a LinkedIn account, there's a free version, and there's a pro version, uh, premier, I think a premium or premier version that you can get. Um, but you don't have to do that, right? Now, just do the just do the free version. And what you want to do is this: um, connect with people you already know initially. Just connect with people you already know. Uh, don't try to reach out beyond that sphere and immediately. So, but by the way, I want you to write this stuff down, guys. Okay, while we're, while we're going with this, make sure you write this down, right? Um, so connect with people you know first. Some of you are already well past the stage. I just want to start at the beginning. Once you've got, uh, you're connected with the people you believe you do know, um, while you're doing that, start posting a few things. Of course, we're all in real estate. So perhaps you could post articles. You can post blogs. I mean, you can take the, 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 the podcasts and the blogs that we do. Um, they're out there every week for you to use, not just for you to, to read and, and look at, um, but also if you're reusing your own marketing, help help drive people to you by giving meaningful, relevant information. So in any case, you can post those things. You can, and one of the things, one of the best things you can do is to, to post questions, okay? In other words, um, don't just 
congratulate people for promotions and things like that, but ask questions. Say, hey, did you see the, the recent article about, you know, the new tax plan, for example, or what's, what's uh, you know, the interest rates, you know, the Fed just announced that the, um, a, rate, a, hike, a hike in interest rates is on the horizon. They didn't get anything specific, but of course we care about that stuff. So ask people, you know, the, do, you, do you intend to buy now or later? Are you looking to invest now or later? Um, just ask questions. The only way to engage people is to ask questions. So let's just look at um, Peter's page here, okay? So you can see he's got a lot of connections. Uh, he lives in St. Louis. I know some other folks in St. Louis, and that's another way uh, I was able to connect with him and, and um, uh, you know, make sure. We're, and by the way, here's the, the one mutual connection we have. This is uh, Dustin Matthews. He used to live in Florida. Now lives out in San Diego. In any case, um, so he has a great description. You know, you can read more about it. I'm not going to, you know, spend a lot of time here. But the thing is, check it out. It's not very lengthy. Look at how short it is, okay? Um, and he's got two special reports, right? Um, you know, are you making the right decisions and making money simple? This was a book he wrote. It's a great book, by the way. Um, so in any case, uh, makes it real easy for people to engage with him, all right? Look down here under articles and activity. You know, he's, he's not just sitting around waiting for things to happen. He's creating things. Got 25, almost 2,600 followers. Uh, who are reading his articles and following him, okay? Um, these are some of the ones he's, he's written. Um, in any case, uh, and we can, you know, I can click on all these and you can see, in fact, there it is, I'll just click on that. Um, you can see he's been kind of a busy guy here, right? So he just did one on Friday, right? Uh, he does one every month, every, he does one of these, well, pretty much every month anyways. And he goes back to this, uh, let's look at, Let's just do all activity instead of just articles. Let's see how really, really he busy he's really been. Um, is that the one from June 21st? No, I can't see the dates on there. Um, in any case, you can see he's been quite busy. This is, this is just on LinkedIn, right? So if we go back, uh, let's look at documents. He hasn't done any documents. There's been, been a lot of posts, of course, uh, which is sort of what we were just looking at. So in any case, uh, um, you, the name of the game is, and we do this too, by the way, is you want to mix it up. This is more of a business site. It's not a personal site like Facebook. You can put personal things on here. Just be aware that they should be somehow or another associated with, with business. Okay. Um, you know, you shouldn't just grab articles randomly. You should also write your own little, little pieces yourself, you know, put a little, uh, preface to an article that you that you think is very relevant and put that out there in any case um you know initially what you do is you just build up your following um you always want to offer something so in other words if we go back to his original to the to the home page excuse me um oops where were we there we go like right here in the about section he's not really asking for anything he's making you an offer choose this book choose this book all right, we call that making an offer. It gets people engaged with you and you get your contact information. That's one of the key things about LinkedIn. Um, later on, if you want to do the pro version, there's paid advertising, things like that. Don't do that right now. Unless you're an absolute rock star at this stuff, use the free version and just build a following, okay? Um, and by the way, if you're in the investment game, which most of us are, real estate investment, you can post properties on here, um, do the analysis, show the, show the property analysis that you've done, you know, the calculators for rental properties, for example, and put those out here, show examples of what it is you're doing, and that'll help drive people to you. Okay, in any case, enough about uh, LinkedIn. Let me just check the chat box here. Do any of you, does anybody have any questions on LinkedIn? If you do, uh, please let me know, okay? Because we're gonna get rocking and rolling here. So if you got questions, uh, now's the time to let me know that. In any case, uh, let, we'll keep linked up in in case anybody wants to come back and revisit this. What I want to do right now is go to Facebook, okay? And guys, you can you can connect with these folks. I mean, the next person I'm going to show you is uh, Anna Jenkins. We're good friends. Uh, she, and her, uh, she and her husband and I have all three worked together. Um, I've, I've trained them to a degree. They, they actually live the, the life. In fact, I'll just tell you. Um, they, they are doing it correctly. The model that we teach there. So what they do is they, um, 
They have their own investment club. I helped them get that started years ago. Uh, they run that every single month. Um, they do obviously work with investors. They don't just collect their commissions with the investors. They also offer property management with the investors, okay? So they got property management, they got brokerage. They do buy their own investments, they got that. Um, they've, you know, they also, by the way, um, they bought an RV and they literally work from the road. They, they, here's what they do, I'll just tell you what they do. It's a, it's a form of house hacking, okay? So perfect example, they'll look for a, a decent all brick three or four bedroom ranch, for example, okay? With a full basement, okay? Not even finished, maybe. Sometimes finished, sometimes not. Typically, a two-car detached garage, okay? This is their, their, you should be writing this down, by the way. This is their format. This is their, basically their, their formula. So what they'll do is, um, now, while they're living upstairs, they'll finish the downstairs. They'll create one rental unit downstairs and, and move down there and then rent out the upstairs, okay? Then downstairs, what they'll do is, while they're living in the one unit they created, they'll create another smaller, like a, almost like a, um, not necessarily a hotel, like a suite, a small suite on one end of the basement with its own exit, entrance and exit. And then they'll, they'll move in there and run out the other side, okay, of the basement. Now they got two rental, two renters in there and they're still living in there myself and themselves. And if they have a really a, a good enough garage with an attic, they'll convert that to another unit, okay? and do that while they're living in the efficiency, okay? Or the studio, excuse me. Now, once they've done that, uh, they'll be looking for another property. They'll buy that, move in there, and then rent out the last unit in the prior property. And they might have three or four units in that property. Well, they've done that a number of times. They've got like over 20 units now just by doing that. It's a, it's a unique twist on house hacking. So uh, in any case, um, they, I, they even, one time they had a property, they were moving so fast, they actually had to move into their RV, literally on the property. I mean, connected with the electricity and everything. It's kind of interesting. So in any case, um, uh, they, if you think about it, they got multiple ways of bringing in money. So they have brokerage. They got property management. They got their investor club. They do their own investing, okay? Um, and they travel over. They're always posting stuff online. So in any case, I want to show you their, um, their Facebook page, okay? So this was Anna. All right now they they by the way they have a uh, home dream realty is their is their business okay in fact we'll uh, we'll go there in a second but if you look at Anna's page okay look what she's posting she's posting properties which I know sounds you know obvious okay yeah girl, we're realtors we're gonna post properties on Facebook um, I would also post investor properties and matter of fact here's I'll go a, a step further. If you know an agent in your office that has an investor property for sale, and maybe you don't have one right now, ask them if you can go tour the property, um, take pictures, videotape it, and post it online. They're going to sell the property. They still, they're the listing agent. They're still going to get the commission, um, but it allow you to maybe generate some buyer activity, okay? Um, they're still doing their own marketing. This doesn't replace their marketing. You're, this is just you doing this in addition to their marketing. Um, and I will tell you, back in Virginia, this was years ago. We actually got so good at that. Guys, we had, we had literally 70 or 80 agents we were working with where when they got a listing, they would, of course, do their own marketing, but we would do our own marketing on their listing with their permission, of course, and bring in all kinds of buyer traffic, which also led to more listing traffic. Um, in fact, we did that at one point. I think we were like 11 different market centers. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's not something you're going to read in the um, material. That's just a quick tip I'm giving you. So you might want to write that down, okay? Don't be afraid to ask. Worst would happen if somebody says no. But the reality is, is if you got a listing, don't you want to sell it? And half the time, actually 70% of the time, the buyer comes from somewhere else anyways, right? You're only, statistically, realtors are only getting 30% of the, on their listings are getting the buyer 30% of the time. So what that means is, the other 70% are usually from people you don't even know or their agents. So why not share the wealth of people you do know? People in your own office, for example. If somebody wants to market your listing, let them do it. My gosh, you're, I mean, two thirds of the time it's going to somebody else anyways. So that was our philosophy. We did that for quite a while. We didn't just do Facebook, by the way. We did YouTube videos. Um, you know, we did, we did, uh, uh, what else did we do? In Canada's called Kijiji. Uh, Craigslist in the States, we did Craigslist. 
Um, we had our own booklet, Hampton Roads Real Estate Guide. It was an online website, uh, had a physical document that coincided with that. So we literally, I mean, we pretty much cornered the market. Matter of fact, we had other brokers tell us, hey, you guys are basically cornering the market. And we said, well, we, we know. <laughs> it's, what, it's what the intention is, right? So if you like that idea, just remember that and write that down because that was a great way to make some money. And it's back on Facebook. A couple more things to write down, guys. Um, I, don't, I don't know that Anna does this, but one of the things I highly recommend to agents is this. You want to seek out and follow uh, people in the professional groups in your area. Don't be shy. Just do it. Link out and connect with the dentist, the chiropractors. I mean, many of you have heard me talk about this before. Um, the different engineering groups. Now, chiropractors and dentists are easy to locate because they advertise like we do. But what about engineers who own their own HVAC business, right? Mechanical engineers, electrical engineers. A lot of them have their own practices, their own consulting firms, for example. Reach out and connect with them because those are going to be your, your, your better clients. I can, we know from experience who they are. Uh, what's crazy, I know I've mentioned this before, but teachers, and it's statistically, if you want to check this out, it's a really interesting book called The Millionaire Next Door. Um, you can get it online, you know, whatever, get the Audible, get it, get it on Amazon. But look and see when they rank the numbers of millionaires by vocation. Check out and see what number three is. As a matter of fact, why don't one of you type in or some of you type in the chat box. What do you think the group of people are by vocation who are the third most, you know, the highest ranking um, or in terms of millionaires, who's third in that ranking? There's one group, one group that's the by vocation, second group by vocation, the third group is, uh, that's, right, that's right, it's teachers, okay? Teachers are the third most likely group of people to be millionaires. Isn't that amazing? Um, crazy. Uh, uh, Victoria saying college professors. Well, technically they're teachers, that's right. Um, by the way, college professors, they really don't make a lot in salary. Here's what's interesting is teachers, they want to make more money and they see real estate investing as a way to do it. Amazing. I thought when I first learned that, I thought that was pretty, pretty amazing. So in any case, um, connect with those groups of people, right? Um, definitely, uh, promote properties. Again, if you don't have your own, seek them out from others in your office and, and offer to, because let's say it, quite frankly, they're, they're letting you do their open houses. They're telling you, hey, go sit in my open house. You get the buyer, they get the seller. Well, same thing online here. You're just doing it online. It's, a, it's the same thing as doing an open house for somebody. So it's no different, guys. Don't feel shy about this, okay? Another thing you can do is you can promote and repost blogs. Like just go to, just go to my investment services, guys, and go to the blog panel. I think there's over 700 blogs out there. All kinds of subjects are all related to real estate. Just grab them and post them. Take, take credit for it. I don't care. I mean, just put, you want to put something out there, right? So blogs, uh, you can also, um, by the way, you can promote the podcast, which would make you look good because we, we started doing a podcast again this year. And everybody we invest, everybody we interview, by the way, is typically professional, almost always professional and often business owners, okay? So to show people that you're connecting with these folks that are just the folks, like the folks you want to connect with, okay? Now, next thing is um, there's books you can get for free. And there's some, if a lot of you are Keller Williams. Uh, if you go to, I think it's the KWU site, Keller Williams University, some, I forget how you link into it, but you can get from some free books, you know, eight steps for selling your home, things like that. If you go, well, if you're actually, a lot of us are server level members. If you go back to the My Investment Services site, click on the members area, go into the, um, here, let's just do it. Here, I'll show you. Um, so hang on one second here. Let's go down. Okay, I'm just gonna show you where you can go to get these, some other books. Um, so we're level, that's what we all are. You log in here. So if you go down, there's the ebook tab, guys. Actually, let me make sure you can see this. Hang on one second. Let me go to share. Oops. Um, there we go. Let me share this with you. Okay, so I'm on the server level down here where it says ebooks. I'll click on that first, okay? And these are all the freebies you can get. 
you know, seven reasons why now is a great time to buy, only eight, eight steps to a home, uh, big book for the serious seller, big book for the serious buyer, real estate investing. Those are the free ones. Now, technically speaking, you didn't hear this from me. I know it's being recorded, but the premier books, these are ones that you all get for free, but other consumers have to pay for. If you want to grab one of these free electronically and send that to, to you know, post that online or give it to your clients, um, you know, it's a great way to help you get, uh, you know, secure relationships. So you, these are ones that there's each, you know, flipping, you know, buying rentals, the whole nine yards, wholesaling, right? Um, what I'm getting is use this stuff um, to help out your clients and it may help you get some better relationships, okay? Some better longer term relationships. So let me go back here and share in a screen again. Okay, so post properties, post books, post blogs. Um, you could also, by the way, shoot a video, which we're going to talk about in a bit. I don't want to jump too far in here, here, but if you're going through a property, do it with your phone, get it one of the old, the old Sony video cams. And while you're walking through the property, video, just like a, a consumer would do when they walk through a property at a showing, and go through the rooms and don't just talk about the pretty carpet and the chandeliers. Obviously, they're going to see that. But if it's an investor property, which in this case I, I'm going to focus on, obviously, is have the numbers with you, the rents, the expenses, the net operating income, what they're asking for the property, taxes, all the numbers. Go through that while you're walking through the property video recording. So now you can come back and post that on Facebook, guys, okay? The video is huge and it has been huge for quite a while. But show people what you're doing. Show people the property by going through it, okay? Um, in fact, if you, there was back in the, when this fall first started, I mean, my gosh, probably 10, 15, no, 15, maybe 15 years ago, that's what we did. We would go through properties, videotape them, come back and post them online. That's what we did, okay? Uh, Facebook and follow, followed by YouTube. It's a lot easier now, which I'll show you in a minute. But video recording, and by the way, you don't have to worry about being in the video yourself. I do recommend you start with yourself in the video, okay? Then you go through the, the property. You're only showing the property, inside and out, the whole nine yards, kitchen, the basement, everything. At the end, turn the camera back around and you wrap up the video by giving them a call to action. Say, if you like this property, you know, message me and I'll send you the financials on the property. Okay, I hope, I hope you guys wrote that one down because that was one of our biggest winners. Video record the property. It, it, you show yourself at the beginning, show yourself at the end. At the end piece, you want to give them a call to action, which is if you like this property, message me. I'll send you the financials on the property. Now you got yourself a good bona fide warm lead, okay? Did that thousands of times, right? Okay, so hope you guys like this so far. Um, it's a little bit of a departure for what we normally do, but everybody's been asking for social media and I wanted to come up with things that are free and easy. And quite frankly, don't take a lot of time because you should be going through properties. And if you're gonna go through properties, you might as well record them, okay? In any case, um, the next thing is, is Instagram. Um, now, you know, I guess I'm a believer now. In the beginning, I, I tend to be, um, like Facebook has been around for a while and I know that there's Instagram now has um, uh, Instagram TV, right? Instagram video, and uh, it, it'll catch on. You know, they're, they're allowing you to have vi longer videos now. Um, and it is owned and connected to Facebook, okay? So it's kind of a natural thing. If you got something on Facebook, you should also take a snippet of it, a smaller segment, and put it on Instagram, okay? So in any case, let's just go to Instagram, and I'll show you, you know, here's one post we made from our last event in Anaheim, I believe. So, so we just put this out there. Let me go back to the original page here. So you can see the number of people like it, number of people that are they're making some kind of a post, okay? So bring that up and you can see, oops, that six people uh, connect, you know, like Vanessa. Vanessa's on Instagram, I'm guessing, and now they can uh, uh, follow her. And so what you do, what again is this is, um, you know, let's say you're, you're at another person's property you can record it. Now, that on Instagram, it has to be much shorter recordings than you normally would see on Facebook. But you, so you can break it up into snippets, okay? Um, connect with the pe person who has the house, or listing, listing agent, that is. Um, 
put this out there. So they put it on their Instagram page. They see the people see you, they connect with you. Now they can follow you and make comments on this too. Right. Um, so in any case, uh, you know, quite frankly, I wouldn't spend a lot of time on this right now. Although I will tell you based on demographics and social graphics, generally speaking, Instagram is going to appeal to more to people in their, their mid thirties and younger. Um, uh, Facebook is going to appeal more to people who are, mid thirties and older, but they're always, every group is in every, so on all, every social media platform. It's just, you'll see larger numbers based on age and demographic and social graphic on the different social media platforms. Okay. Um, but in any case, Instagram is just another thing you can do. You should put pics out there. You can put pics and short videos. Okay. Um, in any case, what I want to do now guys is sort of switch gears on you. Okay. Did you know that YouTube um, has become, become, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out here guys, okay? YouTube has become quite uh, a source of media marketing. Um, and before I go there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a few more things on, on Facebook, because uh, what I'm gonna show you next has to do with Zoom. I'm gonna show you YouTube, then I'm gonna show you Zoom, and I'm gonna show you how you can use Zoom to connect to both Facebook and YouTube, okay, literally at the same time. Before I do that though, I wanna go back to, to um, Facebook, for example, uh, just, just for a moment, okay? Now on Facebook, you can do what's called creating a lookalike audience, okay? So here's what I'm getting at. On Facebook, let's just go back to Anna's page. You know, she can post these things and Facebook's gonna ask her if she wants to boost the post, which is gonna cost money. Um, you can do that. We're a nice looking place here. But every time we do that, it costs money. And what I would suggest you do, just like on LinkedIn, is just do the free stuff on Facebook first. Just have your Facebook account. You can have your own personal account and you should have a business account. You definitely want to have both guys, okay? So on Facebook, personal and business. Well, you can pay for ads on both, but I think in the beginning, I think you should build it up first before you ever pay for advertising. You always want to prove the method first before you start spending advertising dollars. There's an old term in Facebook we call the Facebook furnace, right? <laughs> Which means you throw money in and you watch it get burned up. So it's for right now, what I would suggest is start small, keep it inexpensive, all right? And just put posts out there, short videos, pics of properties, you know, articles, blogs, things like that. Now, if you want to expand your audience, you can do what we call creating a lookalike audience. And here's the instructions on that. Here's the, the, the link right there. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Hang on one second. And I'm going to post it in the chat. So hang on one second to all panelists. All right, so I just sent you the link from Facebook on how you actually create a, a, a custom audience, okay? So everybody should get that. Um, I'm not going to go through it tonight because I don't want to create a, a custom audience. It takes a while. Um, you don't actually get to use it for like 24 hours and, um, you know, they, it's just best if you, this is one of those things you just want to learn on your own, but just know that we have definitely used it and it definitely works. Okay. What it does is you can copy a group of people that you already have. Um, for example, you can also use email addresses. So how about that? So if you've got a, uh, a database with quite a few email addresses, you can upload it into Facebook and they create custom audience uh, um, part of the system and create your own, you know, basically expand the group of people you're going to be reaching out to. And what Facebook does is it looks for all those email addresses in Facebook and finds all those contacts, gathers all the data, all their, you know, their preferences, um, the, what they're following, what books they like, what other groups they belong to, um, you know, what, what they purchased before that, all on there they grab those people and go look for a bunch of other people that have the same type of characteristics and you can you can make it be big or small you can scale it down or, or scale it up um, but but creating a look-alike audience is a great way um, to reach out to more people in a very cost-effective way so so let me just repeat this a little bit number one I just sent you the link just use that you can follow the instructions the other thing is this, is if you've already got a group of people that you're successful with in business, okay, you're generating transactions, you're earning commissions, they're, they're investing, they're making money. 
Facebook will go find all the people out there that are just like them. So if you think about it, you've got a higher percentage of, you know, higher probability of reaching out and connecting with those people and doing business with the new people, the lookalikes, not the originals. I'm talking about the, the lookalikes. It's like cloning. They're, that's what they're doing is they're actually cloning. Okay. Um, you know, by the way, this always generates a lot of uh, Q&A here. So let's see. Uh, um, yeah. So Becky, hey, Becky, how you doing, by the way? Um, yes, that, that, that's what I'm saying. We're now getting into more advanced stuff, Becky. So once you're up and running and you've got some traction, um, you can you can spend a few bucks. But what I would prefer you do is instead of just blindly creating ads and doing ad campaigns, um, is go ahead and create a, either a, a lookalike audience or a custom audience. OK, and only market to those folks. It's way more cost effective. In other words, instead of, instead of scattering an ad across Facebook, trying to, to do it by, you know, demographics like age, race, um, gender, you can all these things you can select uh, profession, who they follow, all those things, you know, that that's going to canvas a wide group of people who may or may not be interested in investing in real estate. However, if you create a lookalike audience that's already looks already looks like an audience you're already serving who does invest, you're more highly likely to get hits off of that. So that's why I'm uh, uh, appreciate that. So look in the someone just said where's the link. So if you look in the chat box, guys. Um, oh, hang on. There we go. I didn't hit the enter key. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. So I typed it in, didn't hit the enter, hit the enter key. So I just sent that out there. Um, let's see. Is that audience separate from other Facebook users? Yeah, so so Victoria, what this is is um they're gonna create Facebook is gonna create a lookalike audience for you and you can save it so that your audience, it's one of the groups of people you're gonna market to, okay? Um now those users, the the people in the lookalike audience, I mean they could be, you know, following a number of people or in another of other people's databases. But that doesn't matter right now. What we did is we basically cloned a group of people that you're already working with to create a lookalike audience um, that looks like the group that you already worked with, we already made money from. That's really the whole purpose of this. Um, so it's a, it's, you know, we, that's why we call it lookalike audience. Now, that's the next thing I wanna show you. What I wanna show you now is you can do what's called a custom audience. And what I did is I brought this up, okay? It's basically beginner spot guide to Facebook advertising. You know, what I want you to do is just, let me get this link. I'll send it to you. Hang on one second. So copy. Um, actually, I better make sure this page is being shared. Let me just do this real quick. Okay, so that's this. Let me type it in the chat box here real quick, and you'll see that link. Okay. Now, custom audiences, basically custom audiences, which is where I'm going to with this. Um, you're not creating a lookalike audience. What you're doing is you're using all the Facebook selection criteria to create a new audience, but you want to, you can make it as very defined as, as you want. Again, you can select it based on people who are following other, you know, like people who follow Robert Kiyosaki, for example, people who follow Grant Cardone. Uh, chances are those, those people who are following those two guys are definitely into real estate investing. So if you're looking to attract real estate investors, you can you can market to people who follow those two gurus. You can also um, select uh, how they spend their money. Believe it or not, Facebook has access to uh, merchant account data. Okay, this is not credit card data. This is the merchant accounts are what the credit card companies use. It's behind the scenes. Well, credit card companies are not allowed to share yours and my information. But if you ever ever wonder how it is people find out about you and you notice you you just bought a brand new suit and all of a sudden you're getting hit with ads from people who sell suits or shoes or belts or ties or dresses or things like that. Um, it's because the underlying merchant accounts aren't restricted. They can definitely sell the data. Yours and my information and they do. OK, they sell our purchasing habits. So when you're getting it, as you can take advantage of that so you can select people who are reading magazines like Real Estate Investor Magazine, um, or you know, all the with any publication that has to do with uh, real estate, right? So in any case, you can select based on that. You can select based on age. 
you can select on the fact that um, they just recently bought a property. Uh, all those things are out there. My gosh, hobbies, um, music they like, books they've read. You can select by dozens and dozens of selection criteria to create a custom audience. So let me check the chat box, chat box here real quick, guys. Um, let's see, all panelists, are Um So I'm not sure, uh, it does say to all panelists, Becky. Um, hang on, let me do this, all panelists and attendees. Let's go back here. I think I know what happened, guys, hang on one second. I had panelists selected and not attendees, so hang on one second. Copy, paste. Okay, Becky, now you should get that. Let me give you the other one too, by the way. This is the lookalike audience, okay? And now that one's coming over. So there you go there. So uh, back to the beginner guide, beginner's guide. The reason I like this is I did some searching for you guys to see what I would recommend. And this one's so easily laid out. I mean, look, chapter one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, you know, it's just a great way to go through and figure out how to do this. You can go to Facebook directly and they'll go through, you can go through the help panels, but it's quite cumbersome, I thought. When I did it years ago, this just makes it so much easier for you. But again, I just want to emphasize something. Three steps to Facebook. Step one is do the free stuff yourself first, okay? Don't pay for any advertising. Once you get some traction, then you can do step two, which is create a lookalike audience, okay? And again, that'll, that'll be a, a, like a, a clone of the people you're already servicing. All right, and you can you can spend your dollars wisely there. The third step is to create a custom audience, okay? And then leave it at that. What I don't want you to do is to blindly spend money on Facebook, because when they say boost your ads, they're not giving you a lot of selection criteria. Maybe age and gender and things like that, or maybe location. But with custom audiences, you can get way, way, way more specific, okay? Um, so just be careful about Facebook, guys. Don't get caught up in it spending money. Just start with the simple stuff, then go to, to uh, look like audience. And then later on, when you're ready to start spending some, you know, some more money, then you can go to um, create a custom audience. So in any case, uh, now that's Facebook. What I want to do right now is um, let's go to YouTube first. So let me go there. I probably should close out some of these sessions here. So let's close that one. Let's close that one. Let's close LinkedIn. Now that's Anna. Premier books, we don't need that anymore. So let's go to YouTube, okay? Produce this. Okay, let's just start with the simple stuff, right? First things first is you should definitely create a YouTube channel, all right? It's easy to do. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Uh, before I do that though, real quick. So what we used to do is we would go out there and record videos on our own video camera, come back to the office, had the video basically loaded on the computer, um, clean it up a little bit, you know, cut out the goofy stuff at the beginning at the end, clean it up. Um, and we would load it onto YouTube and we would load it on the Facebook. That was the old way. Okay. You can do that too. You can still do that today. So here, I'll show you. Look, let me click on my name here. Okay. And I want to show you how to create, we're going to go to YouTube studio where you can create a, uh, your, your own channel. Okay. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's show you how to actually create your own channel. So YouTube set studio, that's what it's called. YouTube studio. Click on your name first over here, right? This is assuming you got an account. Um, let's explore the YouTube video studio. Okay. So in any case, um, in here, uh, Actually, hang on a second, let me go. Oh, you can upload a video. I'm not gonna upload anything, but it's easy to do. Um, ready to get your channel, your channel started, upload a video. Can you click on that? Let's just go ahead and do it. I'm not gonna actually upload anything, but here is where you actually um, select a file from your own computer, all right? Um, you're gonna decide if it's gonna be public, which you probably wanna do, right? Otherwise we wouldn't be doing this. Um, and I'll talk about live streaming here in a bit, so just hang on to your seats. But in any case, that's how you can go through and start your own channel, okay? Now, you can also create a video. Let's just go back. Uh, whoop, hang on one second here. Let's go to this. See the camera symbol with the plus in it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Click on that. You can upload video there. 
Okay. So that's the thing that I just showed you before. So if you go back to studio, uh, I didn't go through the whole process. Um, I don't want to do that. Whoops. Sorry. Uh, what I want you to do is just start by creating your own YouTube channel using this process here. All right. Then you can upload videos. Um, and let me go back to the beginning because I don't know if I can find it here, but I want to go back to the basic screen, basic your YouTube home screen. All right. Um, actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll go to uh, my investment services. Maybe we'll do that. Let's go back here. Oops, sorry. Actually, let's just start all over again because that's going to take me back to the studio. YouTube.com. Okay, there we go. Now, I, what I just showed you is a real basic, easy stuff. You got you set up in your own account. Um, you can go into the studio, create your own channel. It's all free, by the way. But let's see the uh, My Invested Services. Um, there we go. Let's go here. And you can see in here, it's another channel. Um, you can have what's called playlists, okay? So these are playlists down here. Facebook Live, Podcasts, Path of Prosperity events, um, clips from three-day training. Um, up here are individual things I've done, creative purchasing techniques, uh, effective steps to increase income. Um, let's see, group investing, uh, best way to, for in renting property. And there's a whole bunch of them. These are just um, some ones we just recently loaded up. But in any case, uh, the, the thing about playlist is what you can do is create your channel, guys, and then break up your YouTubes by subject. So you can create um, a playlist for flipping. So if you go through looking at properties that were great flips, put those properties in your flip playlist. If you're going through properties that are great rentals, put those on your rental playlist, okay? If you're into the wholesaling with wholesalers, do a wholesalers, wholesalers playlist. What I'm getting is you can have multiple playlists for your channel, okay? Um, great way. And so what happens is, by the way, is people will, will search for subject lines, right? Um, they'll search for, you know, examples of flips or examples of rentals, things like that. And, you know, depending on how you do your keywords and key phrases, your description, by the way, which you definitely want to do. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to. Um, yeah, that's the, let me go back to my investment services. Hang on one second. Um, here we go. Gary Wilson of My Investor Services helps its members prosper abundantly in development of the real estate business. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is in your description is you don't want to overload it with keywords, but you do want to put in there ones that are relevant for you and what you're doing. Right. So, so let's just see, um, let's go back to participants. So, so Jeff, what you could do is create a Jeff, create a channel, um, Detroit investment properties, or right, right there in YouTube, and then create playlists for different types of properties, large multi units, small multi units, flips, wholesaling, things like that. Um, create play, playlist and load that with articles about the the uh, or video, excuse me, about that that you know playlist about rentals, for example. And more importantly, you should definitely do your own videos. The people I've seen do the best on this, guys, they're not grabbing other people's videos. They're actually doing their own videos, okay? So um, in any case, um, you, you create your, your playlist that way, right? Um, YouTube. Now, here's the big thing. Here's what I want to get to, and we're going to try to wrap this up. Um, we're at 45 minutes now. We have just enough time to do Zoom. So clearly, I'm in Zoom now, <laughs> and we're all around Zoom. But unfortunately, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this while I'm actually in a Zoom presentation. So let me just tell you about it, okay? Um, I think each of you should have your own Zoom account. I mean, not, it's like $15 a month, guys. That's all it is. Especially if you want to really, you know, be active in the game of helping people buy and sell investment real estate. Here's why. You can turn on Zoom and go through and record something on Zoom, all right? If you do it, uh, if you have like a laptop or a tablet with you when you're going through the property um, and you save that to your to your computer, your device, the recording, it actually breaks it up into two files. 
one's audio, one's video. All right. Here's why this was important. You can actually start your own blog. Well, the audio, I'm sorry, your own uh, podcast, which we'll talk about in a minute. Your, you know, the audio portion of your recording can easily be taken and cleaned up and rendered, and that will become a podcast for you. Um, now, we're going to probably, we're not going to have time for a podcast tonight, but um, if you go to My Investor Services and click on podcast, you'll see the podcast we have out there. You get a rough idea of what you should be doing. Um, if you're interested, I'll, int I'll introduce you to the person that does my podcast. But the point is this, is use Zoom to create a video, have it saved to your device so that it's split in audio video files, and you get the full recording too, with the audio video combined, obviously. But you can take the, um, the audio, turn it into a podcast. You can also get it transcribed, pennies on the dollar. Honestly, you can get, you can get a short... 10 or 15 minute video transcribed for probably eight, 10 bucks max. Well, that transcription can become a blog. Okay. And, uh, and by the way, please write this stuff down guys, because I'm giving you sort of the, the inside scoop on how a lot of people are making, making money with this. So on zoom, you got something where the audio can be transcribed into a blog. The audio can be loaded into a podcast. The video can now be uploaded into YouTube. Remember we showed you how to do a upload video right here. Click on the, camera symbol with a plus sign okay and guess what else you can do you can actually load it to Facebook here let me show you let's click on more here so you go right here it says live on Facebook I'm, I'm not going to do it now but you click on live on Facebook there's a couple steps you go through and whatever you're recording can be uh, transmitted live via Facebook live and this is a really big deal right now because it's one of the fastest growing sources of media right now is Facebook Live. It's getting a lot more attention. People are, every time you say somebody's live on Facebook now, it's like people jump on there. Um, so you can be going through a property live right there and have a boot posted to Facebook Live right there on the spot, okay? And generate some leads that way. So, so now again with Zoom, let's see how many possible channels of marketing we just created. So on Zoom, we can generate a podcast, right? That's one. We can generate a blog, that's two. We can load it to YouTube, that's three. We can load it to Facebook Live, that's that's four. And you can still load it to Facebook as, as its own recorded, you know, previously recorded file, um, not Facebook Live, but just in your own post. That, that's essentially five ways to do that now. And you, you guessed it, if you're asking, can I do that on, on LinkedIn? The answer is yep. Um, I don't really recommend it to them. And on Instagram, uh, the answer is yes, but it has to be smaller video segments. You can break it up into smaller sections. So again, Instagram is coming up with um, more capability, and I think you're going to see them trying to compete more with YouTube. I think that's what they're trying to do. But the point is, in one move, guys, you can just create yourself four or five, six different pieces of marketing. Um, and that's, that's where I kind of wanted to lead things today, because <laughs> it's powerful. It's a powerful tool. So of all the things I showed you before, I saved this one for last because quite frankly, it's the easiest one. Every, each of you can do this very affordably. And, um, and basically you talk about leveraging your activities and getting multiple things done with one move. Boy, this is how you do it. I mean, how many other, how many other audio and video tools can you use that are generate four to five different marketing pieces at the same time? In any case, guys, we're going to, we're going to wrap this one up here. Um, I hope you like that. I mean, I know I just loaded you full of a lot of information there. Um, but I got to tell you guys, uh, the people I've traveled all over the place, U S and Canada, and the people that I see are having great success right now with social media, the, what I just showed you, that's what they're doing. Okay. Um, even people not in real estate, everybody's kind of catching on, boy, this is the way to go. Um, so in any case, I hope you like that. I would say for a homework assignment would be this, um, is to do it the next week. Go ahead and create a YouTube channel. Go ahead and get yourself on Zoom for 15 bucks. Um, if, you don't, if, you're early, if you don't have a Facebook page for business, create one. You should have a personal page, business page. Uh, go on to LinkedIn, build that out. At a, at a minimum, I think you should definitely do the Zoom thing and then Again, utilize that on YouTube and Facebook at a minimum. Just do that. And by the way, I think you ought to try your hand 
in creating a, uh, a podcast and a blog. Okay, and we'll talk about podcasts in a separate session. All right, guys, that's it for tonight. So next week um, we will be, let's see here. I don't think there's a webinar next week. If I'm, if I'm, I don't think there is. That's correct. There's no webinar next week. Uh, it's because Monday's Canada Day. I'll be celebrating Canada Day. And Thursday is July 4th. With any luck, I'll be celebrating July 4th too. So that's one of the benefits of being married to a Canadian. We get to, <laughs> uh, we do, we celebrate two of everything, two Thanksgivings. How about that? So in any case, the next one will be the 9th of July. We'll see you live online, 9th of July. And remember this, the following week on the 18th, please write this down. One of our own students, uh, Shannon Goldsmith, who's in Spain right now, is going to show every one of us, you, everybody, how to use RPR, and U.S. Census data, um, it, our, it just you know how to actually determine precisely where you actually want to go invest for different types of investing. So in other words, some areas look are good for flipping, some areas are good for buying rentals. Um, you definitely want to be on that one. So in the meantime, you guys take care of yourselves. Uh, God bless you, and we will see you in two weeks. Okay, I think that's it. I'm going to go ahead and hit this. Uh, let's see. That's in recording. Yeah. Okay. You guys take care. God bless you and your families too. We'll see you in two weeks. Uh, Bye-bye.